Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, I want to work on classifying different types of numbers. So the idea is that we have a certain type of number, maybe five and two thirds, and we want to figure out what type of number it is. Is it rational or irrational? To get this process started, it's really about knowing the different types of numbers and, and how you can tell what group to put it in. So some of the groups uh, that you should be familiar with are the real numbers, the rational numbers, irrational numbers, the integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. And here's how you can tell uh, which groups they go into. The real numbers include both of our rational and irrational numbers. So oftentimes if you can call a number rational, you can also say that it is a type of real number. Rational and irrational, the difference here is that the rational ones can be written as a fraction, and of course for the irrational ones, they cannot be written as a fraction. So there's no overlap between these groups. You are not going to get a number that is both rational and ir irrational. It's got to be in one or the other. For our integers, these include 0, the natural numbers, and their negatives. So you'll see numbers like negative 3, maybe negative 2, negative 1, contain 0, and they contain the natural numbers. The whole numbers include 0 and the natural numbers. So 0 and the natural numbers. And of course, our natural numbers are really just uh, the numbers that you can count with. So numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up the line. Now, these numbers fit in with one another, and it's good to know how these uh, groups actually fit with one another. Let's go ahead and create a diagram so you have a better sense of what I'm talking about. So at the very top of this, you can consider our real numbers. And the real numbers can really be split into two different groups. Let's consider that uh, one major group. You can consider your rational numbers and your irrational numbers. And the real numbers contain both of these groups. Let's go ahead and box these guys. So real numbers contain both of these. Now for the rational group, here's where you can break it down even further. So for our rational numbers, you have your um, integers, you also have your whole numbers, and you have your natural numbers. Nice. Now the important thing with this diagram is that if a number is in a group, it's also in the groups connected above it. So let's take a number like, I don't know, uh, let's say zero. Zero is one of our whole numbers. So we could list it out and say, yep, that's definitely in my whole number group. But it's also in the groups connected above it. So I could say, yep, it is also an integer. It's also a rational and it is a real number. So you can see we're really just connecting the ones above it. Now, when you're going through the classification process, always keep in mind that a number can definitely be in more than one group, especially if it is, you know, has those uh, other groups connected above it. Start with the largest group you can and really ask questions uh, and work into the smaller groups as you go down. This really helps out if you know those different types of numbers really well. So you should probably memorize what makes a natural number a natural number, what makes a rational number a rational number. Definitely will make the classification process go very quickly. So let's give this a try with a few different numbers and you'll see how this works in action. So we want to list the different groups of numbers that each of these numbers actually belong to. So let's start off with something like 17 thirds. I'd first start off with the much uh, with the largest group I can, and that would be our real numbers. So I'd say, yes, this is a type of real number. Looks pretty good. And then I really want to go down from there saying, okay, what other smaller groups can I put it in? Can I write it as a fraction or can I not write it as a fraction? That will really determine whether it's rational or whether it is irrational. This one's already a fraction, so of course it goes into our rational category. It can be written as a fraction. All right, now I want to continue down from there. Uh, is it an integer? Is it one of my uh, natural numbers? Is it a zero? Is it a negative of a natural number? 
and unfortunately it's not, so I'm going to stop right there. So I can call 17 thirds a real number, uh, and I can also call it a rational number. All right, let's try another one of these. Starting off with the square root of 5. This is a type of real number. Sounds good. It's in my largest category. Moving down, can I write it as a fraction, or can I not write it as a fraction? Uh, square roots of uh, unsquare numbers cannot be written as a fraction, so we will say that this is irrational. All right, and I'll stop there. Um, we haven't learned any groups uh, beyond that category, so let's try out some others. Starting with zero, we know that it is a type of real number. And zero can be written as a fraction. Remember, a lot of these, all you have to do is put them over one, and sure enough, there's your fraction. So we will say that this is a rational number. Moving on, is it a type of integer? Yes, it is. Is it a whole number? You bet. In fact, the only category that zero does not go into is our natural numbers. Remember, the natural numbers just contain the numbers starting at one, then they go into two, three, four, five, so that they do not contain zero. All right, moving on, square root of nine. This, of course, can be simplified into the number three. 3 is a type of real number. 3 can be written as a fraction as long as we were, uh, write it over 1, so I will say it is rational. It is an integer. It is a whole number. And lastly, it is one of our counting numbers, or what we like to call our natural numbers. Natural numbers. Perfect. All right, let's get into some more difficult ones. When it gets to decimals, oftentimes you're looking if there's a block of numbers that repeats over and over again to determine if it can be written as a fraction. But starting with something like this, always start with that largest group, it is a type of real number. Now I can see for this one, it looks like it goes 2.3 and then it starts repeating sevens over and over again. So those repeated sevens really help me determine that yes, this can be written as a fraction, so I will put it in my rational category. Now, can I go any farther than that? Is it an integer? Uh, is it a natural number or a negative or a zero? And unfortunately, the answer is no. So that's as far as this one goes. It's real, it's rational, but that's it. All right, here's another decimal. So it is a type of real number. Now this one, the fours are repeated, but I'm not seeing any other repeated numbers. I'm, I'm not seeing like a giant block that's not going 4-4 four, four, and then 4-4 four, four again and then 4-4 four, four again. So I'm not really getting the same type of repetition here. So I'm going to put this in the irrational category. Alright, and that number is classified. Just a couple more. Now that we're getting the hang of this. Alright, so 3 is in our real number category. It can be written as a fraction, so we will say it is rational. It is a type of integer. It is a whole number. And of course, it is one of our natural numbers. So it's in lots of different categories. Uh, negative 5.2, oh, we haven't seen any negatives yet, so this is a good one to classify. It is definitely one of our real numbers, but can we write it as a fraction? Well, notice how this decimal actually just stops. It terminates. If the decimal actually terminates, then of course we can write it as a fraction, so we will say it is rational. Now, is it an integer? It, it does contain a negative sign, but that's not enough to just say that it is an integer. Integers really contain the negative of the natural numbers. They contain zero, and they contain uh, all of our natural numbers, so you can see that there's no fractions or, or decimals or anything like that included in the integers, so we're going to stop right there. It is real and it is rational, that's all we can do. Alright, next one. Negative 7. This is a real number. We can definitely write this one as a fraction, just put it over 1, so rational. Is it an integer? Yes, it is. It happens to be uh, negative 7, so it would be further down on my list, but sure enough, it is an integer. Is it a whole number? The answer is no, 
because the whole numbers only include zero on up. Uh, so that as far as we can include with this one, it is real, it is rational, and it is an integer. All right. So as you're doing this process for yourself, remember to start with the largest group, work your way down, and always ask yourself questions to see if it can go into the next group. Some of the major questions you'll ask yourself is, can it be written as a fraction or not? That will help you determine whether it's uh, rational or irrational. And also, the next big question is when you're thinking about its decimal form. Does it stop or does it have this repeated pattern that goes over and over again? Uh, that will help you, again, determine whether it can be written as a fraction or it cannot be written as a fraction. All right. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.